So today we're gonna to talk to Jen Creighton. We're going to learn about how she got started in development, what she's up to today, and what she's gonna be talking about at the upcoming React Advanced London Conference. This video is sponsored by Get Nation. Be sure not to miss the React Advanced London Hybrid Conference happening October 22nd and 25th. React Advanced London will be a hybrid in-person and remote conference with over 60 speakers and more than 20,000 developers attending. There will be over 10 free remote and pro hybrid workshops included. You can expect to hear from authors and core teams from these amazing React libraries and projects. Join live chat rooms, after parties, and fun activities. Discover the future of React and connect with other developers from around the world. Get your tickets now using the link in the description to get 20% off. Jen is an amazing developer, writer, speaker, teacher, podcaster. What else is there? <laughs> um, thanks for joining me today, Jen. Um, why don't you give everyone a quick introduction? Hi, I'm Jen. I am on the Twitters. If you want to find me, I'm at girl code, girl with a U. I'm a engineer who's been working in the field for over nine years now and really have had a focus on front end development and very focused on React for, I would say, almost six years now. Nice. Nice. That's great. So um, how did you get started in web dev? You mind give us, giving us a little bit of background there? Yeah, it's not a, I don't have a traditional background. I didn't go to school for CS, though I actually wanted to. I was just really terrified of the math requirements. I didn't know at the time that most of what I would be doing is not actually math. Um, but after school, I actually had it in sort of like a, an idea that I was going to be a lawyer. And so I decided to work as a paralegal. And then as that turned out, that was not a good idea. Like I, I saw what lawyers do all day and I was like, not for me. I had enjoyed playing around with HTML and CSS when I was a kid. And through like a long path, that's a, like a longer story. I like started relearning it and then also teaching myself JavaScript. And I was very lucky to get my, my first role um, and just have been in web dev since. Nice, nice. I have a very similar story here. I'm completely self-taught. I went to college for, you know, something that that I'm not doing now, obviously. So uh, I think that's very relatable. A lot of people, you know, go to college for a certain thing and they end up with a job that's not related to it at all. So, yeah, pretty, yeah. My background is common. English and creative writing. It's mm. I, I think there are similarities and I gave like a whole mm. talk about this at React Conf 2019, but mm. it it's not the traditional path. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So what have you been up to lately? I know you uh, you worked for Apollo and you have the single threaded podcast. What else are you up to? Honestly, right now I'm kind of up to nothing. Um, oh. I, I had a really great time working at Apollo GraphQL. I was on the Apollo client team as a maintainer of that project. I love open source. So this was a great opportunity and a really great team to learn from. But after the pandemic, um, we're, we're still technically not out of it, but things are starting to open up a lot more. I can be more active and I really felt like I needed a change. Um, so right now I am actually in a period of fun employment. I'm, I'm actually just kind of relaxing and it's really great because my mind hasn't had the time that it's wanted to for a long time to just be curious about a lot of things. So I'm taking some time off. I do have an, a new role coming up, but I'm not ready to announce what it is. Uh, but I'm super excited about it. And I'm just super excited to also be taking like this time off. Um, and I'm currently learning about cloud computing. Like that's <laughs> of interest nice. to me right now. Nice, nice. It's great to take time to recharge. I mean, that's everybody needs to do that. A lot of people just overwork themselves and become burnt out. And, you know, that's that's a common thing. So taking that time is very important. Um, yes. So let's talk about the conference a little bit. So is are you going to be joining this conference in person? Yes. As long as everything works out, I will be there in person. I mm -hmm. desperately miss in-person events. Before the pandemic, I was like, I would fly out pretty much every month to go do something. I love speaking mm -hmm. and because I get to meet people afterwards, you know? Yeah, yeah it's, it's great. I mean, we haven't had that in person. Uh, contact in so long. Um, is this going to be the first your first conference in person if, if it works out? Yeah, it is. I'm nice. kind of nervous That's to exciting. go back to it, but I'm ready because like yeah. it's been a while and I know 
I get very intensely nervous, even though I've spoken on stage multiple times, I still get very intensely nervous. And I actually like use my uh, Apple watch to like heart rate monitor myself. Mm -hmm. And I know that my heart rate goes up to like 145, 150 BPM the entire time I speak, which sounds like maybe not fun, but for me is like the equivalent of skydiving. (laughs) So I'm ready. (laughs) Like I'm ready to skydive again. It's going to be even more awkward, you know, because it's the first time in over a year, you know, being around people, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be weird and good at the same time. <laughs> it's going to be so good. And also everyone's going to feel awkward, which is great. Cause I feel like we're all going to be on the same, the same yes. level of like, we haven't talked to people in so long. We kind of forgot what it was like. Yeah. Yeah. And just so that the listeners know that this is going to be a hybrid conference. So you can attend in person. Uh, it's at the brewery in London. Um, or virtually, remotely. So either way. Um, so what what are you going to be talking about? What's the topic of your talk? So the topic that I really got really excited about was that I realized that the way React looked back in its early days, all the way up till now, is very different. Mm-hmm. And I decided I wanted to do a talk on the evolution of React components over that span. Um, So uh, title TBD, but I think I'm calling it On the Origin of React, sort of a little riff off of Darwin, um, to sort of show what React components used to look like um, back when you would have been writing them maybe five, six years ago. React is all like has been around actually for quite a while and things have changed really significantly. And a lot of people who are getting into the field now and learning React now do not have the context about why things are the way that they are. I always find this really valuable, and so I'm really excited to talk through you know, what they might see in a code base. Uh, if they're working with React now, but they happen to like look at a code base that was written earlier, they're gonna find some things that are really head scratching. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I, I only started uh, React maybe, I think it was around React 15 is when I started. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, it, it, yeah, the, all of that stuff before that, I really, I'm not that sure about. So that, that'll be interesting. Uh, to hear about, you know, how it has progressed. Uh, I really, I did a little bit cla- of class-based uh, React, but just jumped right into hooks and haven't done that much class-based. Do you do any class-based React lately? At this point, no. At this yeah, point, I, I really write no strictly reason. in hooks. Yeah. And so there's people who are coming in that um, maybe have worked with hooks only, and then they look at a code mm-hmm. base where there's a class component. And for them, it's like, what the what? hell? What is all of this? <laughs> yeah. It, it, and it, it is crazy. Even if you worked with it um, during class components, you may not have worked at it uh, when, for instance, refs could only be a string. Like that's mm. a that's a like a weird little thing that like not a lot of people know about because now you usually see refs as a um, a function that gets called yeah. um, or you're using use ref or something like that. So there's like mm-hmm. all these little tiny things that like really evolved over time and like very specific reasons for like why it happened that gets me really excited. Yeah, and then and then it's exciting to see where it's going as well, like see, to see where it has come from and all the progress that it's made and then you know all the things that are on the roadmap that we're, you know, looking out looking forward to. That's that's amazing. Yeah, I so I, when I was starting to like speak about React at events was when concurrent mode had started to be announced. And that was a while ago, actually. The team's been doing just a lot of research and development. So a lot of things are coming to fruition right now that have been in the works for a really long time. And for people who have been there since the beginning, this is huge. And for people who are just coming in, it's a lot of information to take in all at once. It is, it is. It, it, it seems like uh, it's it's evolving so quickly. It's it's sometimes it's hard to keep up with technology, not just React, just technology in general. It's, it's hard to keep up with. But now, before we wrap up, um, is there anything that you'd like to add uh, or shout out? Anything that that you want to talk about? I I think actually the only thing I want to shout out is that the React team has done just a really good job of really talking about the current state of React and and sort of doing the working group. Uh, getting their plans out there, providing information in a way that also has evolved over time. And I'm really excited about this particular moment in React history. So I'm a shout out to React team and also just like anyone who's learning React, I know it's really overwhelming. It's going to be okay. We're here to help. Yes, for sure. Awesome. So whether in person or remotely, be sure to join us October 22nd and 23rd 
at the React Advanced London Conference. Be sure not to miss the React Advanced London Hybrid Conference happening October 22nd and 25th. React Advanced London will be a hybrid in-person and remote conference with over 60 speakers and more than 20,000 developers attending. There will be over 10 free, remote, and pro hybrid workshops included. You can expect to hear from authors and core teams from these amazing React libraries and projects. Join live chat rooms, after parties, and fun activities. Discover the future of React and connect with other developers from around the world. Get your tickets now using the link in the description to get 20% off.